Hey everyone, I know I uh, talked in previous videos about talking about the windows and how my contractor had actually recessed them and caused a whole host of problems. And the only options I had were to pull all the windows and doors all out again, re-subframe them, buck them all out, redo everything. And that was gonna be real tricky. We were probably gonna break windows getting them out. Some are very high, 20 feet up in the air. They're big, awkward. So I didn't want to do that and I didn't think it was uh, necessary. So I came up with a solution of using four x four and notching it. So this is actually really deep. So we had, uh, had to notch the back in two different spots to make it fit in flush. And then what we, this is uh, actually furring. This is going to be for the siding. So this actually isn't anything to do with sealing the window. But what I did is I sealed it again. So I sealed the inside that was recessed i sealed the subframe did it with caulking then i hit it with the red guard the same stuff that you guys see in the video that i used for the um crawl space on the outside he screwed up as well so but what i want to show you was a solution that was actually would work it was expensive i will kid you not four foot four by four cedar finished is not cheap and then all the labor we had to put into this but I think the end product is something solid that will not rot, that will not leak. And I left the behind it hollow. And the reason I did that is they did not, this is the vapor barrier that I put on. They did not vapor barrier anything behind the window like you're supposed to do. So we had no vapor barrier behind there. So I decided to leave the channels open just in case any moisture ever did get in, it would run down since I sealed everything and I left the bottoms of everything open so it should come out, flow down if anything ever did get trapped, and I'll have some, uh, I should have basically airflow in there still. So it should, in theory, it should work and solve everything. And also what I needed to do is I needed to have, since the drip edge, the way it was recessed was so goofy that the, these are not flush with the wall. They're, the, the, the face of the window is actually about a quarter, three quarters of an inch to a half inch inside of the outside of the wall, if that makes sense. So my drip, my weeps for, for uh, water down here in your windows were recessed even back again. So what I had to do is create an actual drip edge off my window. That's why they're cased this way. That's why instead of casing long out, which is what you would usually do and then supporting inside. I had to reverse it so I could have this edge. It's eight degrees, so water will not build up here. And if I had to try and run it all the way across, well, I couldn't because I would still have a board that runs all the way down. So this was the easiest way to do it. So there's a ton of, of caulking in here and it's all sealed up. But I just wanted to show you that so you can see the solution I had to come up with to make it work. But I think it's a good solution and it's far better than what my contractor would have come up with, which probably would have leaked and caused a lot of rot and a lot of issues down the line, probably well after he's gone or would any warranty of any sort if he had warranty anything, which I highly doubt. But yeah, so yeah, this is a good solution. And I wanna show you something else. You can't see these on the ones that are primed, but right here, Another trick is these are, we had to use almost six inch screws, wood screws. So we had some pretty big holes there. And in order to patch those, what I learned, I learned this probably about 10 years ago is you use carbondo for the holes. And the reason you do that is A, it will stick to the metal of the screw. It doesn't shrink kind of uh, when you use uh, wood putty or other things that you use to patch holes, what it'll do is it'll shrink on you. So then you gotta go back and hit it again. Well, some of these windows, trust me, I don't wanna be up on a ladder twice for each one of these. And it's easy to sand and it's weatherproof. So you don't have to worry about it ever going bad or popping on you. Once that Bondo's in there and it cures and you sand it, it's pretty much forever. So that's one a little trick you guys can use too when you're uh, patching wood I've done it with inside trim a bunch of times when I've made a bad cut or have a gap. I'll use Bondo and fill it all in and I can sand it to shape. So, little trick there.